It's a pleasure to be joined by Herdis Gudmundsdottir and Liam Kaplan. We have had such a great time working on Liam's violin concerto, and we're so excited to present the world premiere of this fabulous new concerto. Um, Liam, you picked a beautiful ensemble, uh, two flutes, two clarinets, two horns, three violins, three violas, three cellos, and a bass. And uh, it's really such a fabulous piece. So I want to just ask you to talk a little bit about your piece and, and Herodice to have you talk a little bit about, about the experience of preparing a world premiere, a brand new piece. Liam. Thank you, Tim. Um, no, I actually thought for a very long time about exactly what instruments to use. And at the time, I had no idea that 16 would be the perfect number to just fit on the stage of Warner with social distancing. Um, but, you know, the, the wind ensemble was inspired specifically by um, a piece by Ravel that I absolutely love, um, the three Mahler May poems, which has two flutes and two clarinets. And I added the horns to sound more orchestral. We talked um, about that piece when you were writing this piece, be before it actually became a violin concerto. Mm -hmm. We actually talked about uh, performing that piece on the same program. Those truly are remarkable songs. I love those pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And th that piece is ex very successful to me in sounding orchestral, even with a chamber ensemble, which is what I was going for. Um, and the string ensemble is the same as Bach's Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 3. Um, which has become kind of a trend in Oberlin. Stephen Hartke um, and Jesse Jones both used it for their piano concertos, and Kari Watson used it for her um, song cycle, and it's 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 catching on. <laughs> and and what is the benefit of that uh, configuration? That that it allows the the string players to act both as soloists, but also sort of a a concertant or um, a, a a small orchestral color. Exactly. And, um, you know, three of one instrument, three violins, three violas, three cellos is enough to sound like a small orchestra, but also um, in this piece, very often they act as choirs of three instruments, especially the cellos. Um, very often the, the three cellos in, in parallel harmonies accompany the violin, just, just those instruments. Which creates a, a wonderfully rich, velvety, lush texture. And, you know, it's, it's worth noting here that the three cellos, probably because of their, their distance in range from the violin, have a very prominent role in this concerto. There's a lot of dialogue between the solo violin and the three cellos as a, as a unit. Exactly. And my original plan, you know, when this piece is eventually done after the pandemic was to have everyone standing except the three cellos in the middle. So everyone's kind of in arcs around the cellos. <laughs> but the social distancing actually did work quite well yeah. on the stage. And uh, <clears throat> it, it proved to be really a, a lovely performance and very effective. Herodice, what was it like preparing a world premiere, a piece that, that you had no record of other than getting the music from Liam? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was. It was so it was so wonderful. It was, it was very nice that um, I mean I I know Liam very well and and I I was able to ask him many questions about everything and but it was very funny not being able to hear a recording or because uh, usually when um, I learn concertos I get a lot of inspiration from hearing a lot of recordings but instead I had to just sort of um, I, I had to be inspired by my, like on my own and also by what Liam was inspired by. Like he, he told me he was inspired by, um, he went to Iceland <laughs> once and he, he was inspired by like the, like the mountains and the, and like the, how the ocean is like are all around Iceland. And yeah, I think that was, that was great. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was harder, like way harder, I thought. Um, than a normal concerto, um, mostly just because of, yeah, that it was brand new and, <clears throat> excuse me, it was also like that added pressure maybe of like, like this was the first time it's premiered, no one has ever heard it before. But I have to say that you, <clears throat> um, you dove into this process with 
great confidence and you play the concerto in a way that makes us feel that you have complete ownership over it. You, you have your own musical ideas with it and, and you play it like it's a piece that's been played a hundred times before. So I commend you and compliment you on your amazing work with this piece. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I could not be luckier than to have such a dedicated violinist to play this piece. <laughs> Yeah, it's also so lucky that we were able to do it now, like in, in the middle of a pandemic. It was... In the middle of a pandemic, yes, yeah. to give a world premiere, to bring a piece to life. Uh, yeah. so, so Liam, you know, kudos to you. What an amazing accomplishment. And uh, it's such a beautiful piece and a wonderful performance. I hope that it has a long life and a rich performance history. Thank you so much, Tim. And thanks for bringing it to life for the first time. <laughs> a great pleasure.
Thank you. 